You really don't have to dig very far into the depths of the internet or social media to find one of the most common problems faced by medical students, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evident success. Imposters suffer from chronic self-doubt and a sense of intellectual fraudulence that overrides any feelings of success or external proof of their competence. Up to a quarter of male students and half of female medical students show signs of imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome has been shown to correlate with emotional fatigue, with burnout, and with cynicism in medical students. My name is Connor Diblin, I'm a fourth year medical student, and in this video we're gonna talk about imposter syndrome, and we're gonna talk through some of the things that we can be doing to try and avoid it. What does imposter syndrome even feel like? Imposter syndrome, at its kind of most basic, is a feeling that you don't belong where you are, despite having earned a place there. In medical school, it's so common for people to feel less than or unequal to peers that surround them. Being in medical school can create the perfect environment for imposter syndrome. Medical school is a very competitive environment. As students, we're continually pitched against each other. The way that our exams are graded is not based on some predefined grade boundary. Instead, we're ranked against every single other student in our year. Every medical student who graduates in the UK each year is ranked nationally against every single other student graduating that year. Everybody knows that getting into medical school is a competitive process. A-level grades, personal statements, interviews. Throughout this whole process, medical students are told that only the best of the best will be allowed in. And then the successful applicants are given an offer and they're told that they are the best of the best. When you receive even one out of the four medical schools that you can apply for each year, it's kind of a confirmation from these medical schools that in some way you were better than the other people who applied. But then you get to medical school and loads of people feel like they've been allowed in by mistake. For many students, starting medical school is like a shock to the system. Medical students, typically, have come from schools, colleges, sixth forms, where they were the top of their class. They're gonna have been used to being in the top percentages of all of the students in their school. Any class can only have so many people in the top percentages, though. And that means that 90% of medical students are gonna go from being in the top 10% of their class to not being in the 10%. Going from being told that you are gifted and talented, that you're very clever, into a group of 400 top one percenters can be a really rude awakening for a lot of 18 year olds. Suddenly people go from good grades, from minimal effort, and from everything making sense to feeling like you're falling behind your peers. Sometimes it can just feel like you're an imposter among all of these perfect medical students. And other medical students rarely help the situation. In medical school, and especially in London's top universities, there is this unspoken expectation that you achieve high grades. And while you're achieving these high grades, somehow you're expected to have a social life, to be doing extracurricular activities, like being in societies, like getting published, and also to act this whole time as if you're not working really hard. This is untrue, it's a charade, it is a facet that people put up because they think they need to. And I've really been guilty of this before. It's really unfair and honestly quite damaging to young and new medical students. This whole charade is kept alive by students seeing their seniors and their peers doing really well in exams while pretending that they're not working hard or struggling outside of exams and by people hiding the effort that they're putting in. And again, I, I have been guilty of this before. So what is the cure for imposter syndrome? Unfortunately, imposter syndrome can't be cured by some sort of external intervention. And stopping imposter syndrome or curing imposter syndrome is easier said than done. In order to stop feeling like an imposter in a situation like medical school, one of two things kind of needs to happen. Either the medical student needs to realize that they're just as hardworking, just as dedicated, just as deserving of being where they are as everyone around them, or they need to realize that this image they're holding in their head of a perfect medical student is just a lie. As I said before, I am definitely someone who has been guilty of perpetuating this perfect medical student image. If somehow you've got the impression from these videos and from my social media that I'm always on top of things and I'm always productive and I always know what I'm doing, I'm sorry I've given you that impression. It is not true. A lot of the time I am sitting on my butt watching Netflix and the rest of the time I don't really know what I'm doing. There are a few things that I have found that have worked for me for getting over imposter syndrome when I felt it particularly hard. And that's quite often. 
I felt it in medical school, being on the extended medical degree program rather than the five-year program. So I'm on a six-year program where we did the first year split across two years. And I think for quite a lot of us, there was a kind of a feeling after those two years when we joined the other cohort who'd just done one year, oh, are we somehow less clever than the people who've managed to do what we've just done in one year? So there was definitely a point there where I had a bit of imposter syndrome. Going into hospitals for the first time, when you're a little baby medical student and you see this more senior medical students around and you just assume that they must know what they're doing with the patients. They must already have all their clinical skills signed off and know how to do all of these things and you don't even know where the toilets are. And also with starting YouTube, I still feel a bit of imposter syndrome as soon as I press record on this camera. There are some things that I maybe wanted to do but not done because I felt like, oh, maybe that's not my place to do. So the things that I have found useful for getting over imposter syndrome have been, first of all, not being afraid to ask for help. When you ask for help, especially if you ask for help in a public way, you realize that the vast majority of people that you've been holding on this pedestal have the same questions as you. If you're in a practical or a tutorial and you say to the person leaving it, I'm sorry, I don't know what that means you will see this wave of relief go around the room where everyone else in the room realizes they don't have to keep on pretending that they knew what that word meant or what this procedure was. On a similar theme to that would be to offer to help your peers. If you can see that a peer, a friend, a colleague is struggling with something that you feel like you have a little bit more of a grasp on, offer to explain it to them. Now don't be arrogant about this, don't tell them that they don't know what they're doing and that you know what you're doing better than them. We're trying to stop imposter syndrome here, not foster it in other people. Let's say that I had a particularly good understanding of cardiac anatomy and I had a friend who I knew was struggling a little bit, I could say to them, hey do you want to rise up together? By taking on this kind of teaching role with your peers, with people you look up to, you will one, build confidence and two, at some point they will pay it forward. At some point someone's going to say to you, hey do you want a hand with that? And this might be something that you're really struggling with and that you didn't want to speak up about. Now the next two are pretty specific to medical school. And firstly, that is, remember how hard you've worked to get to where you are. You did not just waltz in accidentally into your medical school. You applied like everyone else, you jumped through the same hoops. You did your work experience, you did your A-levels, you did your GCSEs. You went to your interview and passed your interview. You went and sat the UCAT or the BMAT or the GAMSAT and got a good enough grade to get to where you are. So you deserve to be there assuming we've worked hard together. And remember, there are no first or second or third class doctors. No one gets a first or a two one or a two two or a third. You pass or fail. You either graduate medical school and you become a doctor or you don't. And the vast majority of people do. Getting into medical school is the hardest part of medical school. If you do find yourself struggling in medical school, whether that's because of imposter syndrome or because of the curriculum or anything, please do get in contact with your university support team they are there to support you. Your university should have set you up with a personal tutor, maybe even an academic tutor as well, and there will be dedicated support teams within the university who are there for students like you. Imposter syndrome is something that half of female medical students and a quarter of male medical students have dealt with or are dealing with. You're not alone. Reach out. One last thing that I found really helped with these feelings of imposter syndrome was building a good support network. I found that by having the right friends and colleagues around me, I could really alleviate this imposter syndrome. I spoke quite a bit more about my feelings on building a network and how I went about building a network at medical school in this vlog, just towards the end if you want to go and check that out. Otherwise, have an awesome day. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.